everybody. <clears throat> While I wait for PowerPoint to start up, uh, my name is Anusha Jayanti. I am working with Dextra as a product in charge. Um, we make uh, Android apps based on personalization and uh, context. And uh, some of the things we made are Friday and dial app. Uh, what I want to talk to you all today is about creating delightful user experiences. So what I want to focus on are the small things that you can do, you know, which take very little effort but have a very high impact, and you end up with the users being delighted, which instantly then gives you a lot of benefits. So why should you focus on creating delightful user experiences? Um, it's pretty straightforward, right? One is instantly you get good reviews because at that one moment, the user has gained something from your app and will F, uh, which will essentially then translate on to the reviews. The next thing that I can talk about is definitely virality, right? So um, to give you a good example there, let's think about the Android uh, settings. So in every Android version, Google essentially comes out this with this one small thing, which is like a game. For example, in Lollipop, we have uh, the Flappy Bird version of Android. And something like this, uh, eventually goes viral, and uh, you, now we are talking about Google, which is automatic, which is of course a big company. So it doesn't really come into picture there. But when you are talking about a small thing, and when the user has this whole experience of actually having discovered something which is deep inside your app, and you know gets to play with it, gets delighted by it, wants to talk about it, that's what is one of the recipes for virality. And uh, another great thing to use this for is for upgrading your user. So um, you know, whenever you want to try and monetize your app, it's always a good idea to try and push this in at a point of time where the user is already feeling really good about whatever you're doing inside your app. Uh, to go back to the good reviews part, uh, something interesting that Clash of Clans does is uh, so Clash of Clans is an app where you get to create your own war base and you can go and raid other people's war bases and you can win the game or lose the game based on how many stars you get and so on. So what ends up happening there is uh, whenever you win a war, which is when they ask you for a review. So uh, automatically, it, it so turns out that you will go back. Even if, it, let's say, there's been an error or it's taken too long for the game to load, you'll feel good about it and you'll go ahead and give them a good review. Um, I'm really sorry about this, but I just have to check about why this is not loading up. OK, so again, really sorry about it. I know it completely breaks uh, the flow of the talk. So I was talking about onboarding users. And it's a, it's a really good time to ensure that you can push them on to a plan. For example, you, there's this app called Todoist, right? It's a brilliant task management app. So what it does is uh, it lets you create as many tasks as you want, put in filters, and so on. It also has this little thing called karma rating. So this karma rating is calculated based on how many things have you completed in the time or in the task that, uh, in the you know on or the date that you set for it. At a time when your karma rating is really good and you're doing well and you know the statistic looks good is when they are suggest that why don't you go for the pro option? So now the pro option has a whole bunch more of filters. You can add anything you want, and that's a really good tactic, right? You're feeling good about yourself. You think you're doing well with the app. The app is actually letting you be productive. And hence, you want to go for the pro version, which means that maybe you'll be more productive. Maybe you'll use the app for uh, you know, more number of things. So uh, you know, you know, these are some of the instant effects that come up. What, what are the, some of the places that we can plug this into is what I'll be talking about next. 
So while I wait for the power to catch up, I think it's an issue with my laptop. So some of the best places to plug this in are error pages. So to give an example, uh, when you go on to Gmail, right, and you try to create an ID, and you go into, uh, if you, let's say you put your date of birth as, uh, uh, let's say, 2030, it instantly asks you, so are you from the future? Right? Or when you try to create an email ID with too many dots, it says we are good with punctuation, but the user IDs won't work. So things like these really help. And error messages are just one kind of microcopy that you can use. Flickr.com changes the language in which it says hello to you every time you log in. Now, that's such a beautiful thing, right? It's an instant connect. You get to know how to say hello in a new language. And it's a small thing with changes which you notice every day. It's not big enough to cause a disruption. And you can just go on with everything while you learn how to say hello in a new language. So error messages are error messages microcopy is definitely one place that you can focus on when it comes to um, you know, finding out how to delight users. The other thing is utilizing common gestures. So what I'll do is, because uh, this completely you know, refuses to go on, I'll open up Fabulous on my phone in the meantime. So you know, pull to refresh is one of the most common gestures we have, right? But it is also true that a lot of apps don't really need pull to refresh because the content is not going to change every time. So what this particular app has done is instead of uh, completely disabling the gesture, they have decided to surface something new when you do pull to refresh. So there you go. So you can see that now, right? So uh, this, is, this is how it looks normally. And when I pull down, it says pull to make me fabulous. And when you pull it down, it shows you a whole bunch of things you can do, like yoga, power nap. And each of these is so beautifully designed. And like you can go in, and you can do a whole bunch of other things. But the point there is they're using something very simple that everybody knows how to do to you know, make something really interesting to surface a new feature. Now, this is not something that you would ideally go into or explore. This is something which, which, have, which would have been hidden in settings, which would have been two to three taps away. But they've managed to bring it on right in the surface while making you feel really good about it. So uh, common gestures that we can always use are pull to refresh, slide, uh, because we've all been taught how to you know, use slide, thanks to Google. And uh, that's definitely one great way to put in features. The other thing I want to talk about is transitions. So when, you're, when, you make, when we talk about transitions, I think uh, material design is definitely one of the best examples we have right now. Right? So uh, what happens is, though I, a lot of the work shifts from the designer to the developer, in the end, uh, the whole app seems very light, feels responsive. The user feels that they are the ones who have initiated the whole change. Right? So um, even though they, it, it might take two seconds to move from one screen to the other, because of whatever you see happening there on the screen, you never feel that there's a lag. And you always know what's happening. So transitions like these might um, you know, add a little more work when it comes to the amount of time it takes to br bring something one second to the end. But it definitely is one of the greatest things to use. I'll give you a good example. If you open the calculator in Android L, um, a calculator is a very simple app, right? It's really boring. But with material design, with the way they've put it in, it looks so beautiful, and it's such a delight to use. When, as in when you press on each number, the the, the animation that you see happening, you know, just moving and the whole thing just feels so great. Uh, I'll give you another example of how we use animations and transitions and small things like that in one of our own apps. So um, Knock is an app which we put into the market about uh, uh, four or five months ago, right? So this is uh, this is an app which is about communication, which means you need people to be talking and you need a lot of people on the app at the same time, which meant that sharing was really important. It was very important for us that people share the app and people share uh, you know, their IDs on Knock and they invite other people. So what we ended up doing was, so Knock has these little tiny circles. And we ended up putting the share button inside one of these tiny circles and making this small animation, which would ensure that the Facebook button just moves around. It just wiggles around. And we saw at least a 10% increase in shares just with that tiny little thing because it's not disruptive. But when you open it up, people see it, and it moves, and it instantly draws your attention. right? So that was something that, uh, from my personal experience, really helped us. Um, something else that can be used is uh, uh, you know, small things like, which might seem very superficial, but uh, you know, in the end, users feel connected to whatever you're doing. 
uh, adding small things which help users communicate, like smileys. An example that I like to use here is called, uh, it's called, it's a game called Brain Wars. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on Android L, so I can't, you know, use the same display. But I'll tell you what it does. So it's a very small app. Uh, it essentially lets you compete with other people. But the good part is, but just before you start off on the war, um, you have this just eight smileys, right? Just eight smileys there, and you can tap on each of the smiley, and the smiley will pop up. And what happens there is you get to communicate with the other person just in terms of smileys without actually doing anything. So forget about the fact that whether you're actually winning or losing doesn't matter. But the, just that experience of you know exchanging the smileys and feeling good, it, it's a really nice thing. And um, you have these thumbs of smileys, you have these sleepy smileys, which you can just exchange even in the middle of the game or at the end of the game. And uh, that's a really nice gesture. Um, now, I'll come to how do you figure out what to put each of these where. Uh, and to make up for this, I promise I'm going to put up the slide somewhere where you can refer to them. So the model I'm going to use to, for understanding where to put up, uh, you, you know, what kind of um, mechanism to use, how to use, and what kind of user should we be targeting, I would suggest going for a gamification model by Bartle. Now, this gamification model has four categories in it. You have the achiever, you have the killer, you have a socializer, and you have an explorer. An explorer is somebody who will go inside your app, who will want to take a look at every single toggle that is there and play around with it. A killer is somebody who, no matter what, what stage he is in, he just wants to end the game, go to the end, reach the pro level of the app. A socializer is somebody who enjoys nurturing, who enjoys growing, who enjoys inviting other people into the app, who enjoys uh, you know, using the app as a medium to communicate and to grow her own circle. And an achiever is somebody who's, who cares about getting every single start there is to get on every single level. Right? It doesn't matter whether how many levels he's crossed, and it doesn't matter if he has crossed a level or has not crossed a level, or if, uh, coming back to the app version, if he has uncovered a feature or has not uncovered a feature, if there is nothing to gain from it. So uh, going deeper into each of these models uh, and going back to the examples that I talked about, when we talk about the socializer, right? a good example would be, let's say you have a music app. A single suggestion coming from a friend is what would delight a so the, the socializer a lot. Or going back to the brain wars example where I talked about the smileys, those smileys coming across is what really delights the socializer because they are making friends. In, in some way, they are connecting with the other person. right? When we talk about the explorer, whatever Google does inside its settings is what delights the explorer. They like to go in. They like to share about each of these things. Uh, they like to talk about each of these things with their friends. And that is what helps each of these tiny little elements go viral. Um, when we are talking about the killer, the developer options, the way Google has put it in, uh, where you go, you have to tap on it five times. That's the, that's the killer. They want to get to the end of everything. right? And for Achiever, we have so many examples across everywhere. It's about the pages. It's about the number of things you have done, and so on. So uh, that's all. And I'm really sorry about that. But uh, in case anybody has any questions, we can talk about it. Or um, I can put up the slides later. And you're free to message me or you know, ask me any questions about it. Excuse me. Hello. Yes. What are yes. some of the resources that uh, we can improve ourselves on this stuff? So um, one of the things that I did not cover here is um, when it comes to tutorials and so on. So there's a Tumblr, Tumblr I follow for that. It's a really cool Tumblr. What this person does is uh, she goes into every single uh, startup and tutorial flow and actually analyzes it for the pros and cons. So. Um, if you Google for first experiences and the tutorials Tumblr, you'll get it. That's, so, that's one of the very focused resources. But apart from that is generally going into pttrns.com, which essentially lists down all the uh, screens and everything across all patterns uh, for all apps across iOS and Android. And that's one of the places where I go to pick this up. Um, you know, from where you, I can see uh, all kinds of flows, whether it is Fustron or settings or tutorials or throughout. Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I'm sorry, but this is. Um, sure, so this is the app I was talking about, which is called Brain Wars, which is where you have the smileys, which you can, and you can see all the, you know, sleepy bubbles coming up and so on. And let me see if I can still go through it completely. And we are talking about Easter eggs, which is something that Google does a lot. And sorry. So these are the four models, and I just have the pros and cons of each of them running through, so I'll put it up. Uh, hi. Uh, so when you said four kinds of users, you're saying that any app will have those four kinds of users, right? Every app will have these four kinds of users. It just depends on what section are you looking at. So even if you're looking at a music app, so for example, Google profiles all the different kind of music uh, that you like to listen to. And uh, you know, it, it tells you, OK, you know, this is the kind of music you listen to. This is probably where you are. So if you're looking at, OK, you know, I have listened to this, these many kinds of music, that's probably what an achiever would like to look at. Whereas, uh, let's say if you're getting a, a suggestion from somewhere, uh, or if you if you a friend shares something with you, that is what a socializer would like to look at, right? Again, something uh, the pull to refresh, or if you have something hidden like that, uh, things like that are where the explorer would come in. So each app, each uh, rather than looking at it from an app level, I would suggest looking at it at things from an interaction level. At that particular interaction, at that particular screen, what are the kind of players that would end up being there? And hence, what are the things I need to do to encourage them at that particular point of time? Anusha? Oh, I, can I ask a question? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just curious if you can share with us how you test uh, your designs with users. As in, do you sort of sit down with them and see how they react, or do you you know, have videos of how they use. I mean, I'm just curious how we can uh, sort of. Uh, so there are uh, two ways. One is I do observe a lot of people using the apps. So, however, the user base isn't as big as I would like it to be, or as varied as I would like it to be. But I think I get a decent number of, um, you know, those different subsets of the users that end up using the app. So I do look at uh, what is the st what are the steps they are taking to reach a particular endpoint. Right? And is it the same path that I imagined they would follow? I also try to look at what are the features they're discovering and not discovering. And the other thing I do to take user feedback is general mails and uh, um, uh, Excel, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, forms. So uh, videos, however, is not something I use for judging there. But, but do you think uh, sort of standing behind them and just observing how they use and making notes is a, actually a good way to uh, test your designs? Yeah, that definitely is a good way to test the design, but there is more it, it, it's, I think it also comes down to how you pick your user base. Right? Yes. Mm. So um, uh, all of this would depend upon what stage of uh, testing you're doing, right? Is it at a concept level, which is where you would try to understand whether the problem statement or the hypothesis that you've created Make sense or not, and is that what you know? In the end, uh, the user is getting at if he's discovering that it is a solution for the problem statement that was imagined. Um, let us say if it is at a level where you're doing A/B testing or you're just trying to decide whether it makes sense or not, um, you know, then you'll have two different kinds of users testing on two different uh, paths and trying to figure out what works out best and are they following the optimum flow there or not. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would totally depend upon the the state of the app that you're in, or you know, the kind of um, uh, results that you're looking for. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>